morning I've asked Nick and his family to do something special and out of their comfort zone. Now, you may not believe this, but, you know, these guys do more things behind the scenes than they ever do up front. But just recently, in, in sacrifice of their family vacation this year, they went down to Hermosillo, down to the mission area where Jeff and, and Lily are and, are and Gabe are, down where we support the orphanages and their work down there through our Christmas tree program, our Christmas shoebox program and those things. I don't know if you remember Jeff and them were here. And when they were here, these guys got it in their heads and in their hearts as the Lord directed that they needed to go down and give up their summer vacation as a family and to do it in ministry and in service. So I've asked them to come. Come on up, guys. Give them a hand. To come up and share with us. what they learned, and then they're going to have a special offer just for you guys, right? There's an offer. All right. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Um, I'm Nick. It's my beautiful wife, Christina, and my handsome sons, Eric and Marcus. It's okay if you get them confused. They'll answer to either one. Uh, we, we couldn't have our girls with us here this morning because uh, Lily's sick and... Um, she, uh, she wasn't able to be here, so Lexi's at home watching her. But we did want to share about uh, how the Lord brought us to this trip. Um, uh, the, the long part of the story starts about eight years ago. Christina went on a, a mission trip, a short-term mission, um, 12, years 12 years ago. 12 years ago. 12 years ago. <laughs> And, uh, and that was when she was just a, a baby Christian. She was just starting her walk with the Lord, and, and the Lord did some really powerful things in her life through that. And uh, then she uh, dragged me along with her the following year, and um, it was just amazing to, uh, to be a part of what the Lord was doing through that, uh, not only what we were doing in the community, but what the Lord did in us as a mission team. And uh, we've been praying that, you know, the Lord would give us an opportunity to do that again. And um, last year, being our 10-year anniversary... Uh, Christina started saving up for, uh, for a trip for us to take and uh, celebrate that to Mexico. <laughs> I didn't want to go to Cancun. Um, but she, she was so effective at that, she managed to save enough for us to take the whole family. And so we were looking at places to go um, here at the end of the summer, around August. And that's when Jeff and Leela showed up to, to share about their work there in Hermosillo. And they concluded by saying, hey, if you're planning a vacation why don't you come and see us in October when it's cooler there, which happens to be when we were planning to go for our anniversary. And so, you know, the Lord planted that seed, and we prayed about it, and uh, we started communicating with them, and we ended up you know, heading down there to uh, spend a week with them and, and working in children's outreach. And um, we have some, some pictures and stuff that we want to share. Okay. So... Um We've had people ask us a lot, where is Hermosillo? And um, my son laughs because um, as a Mexican family, it's like a big no-no to say the L's. Pastor Gary uh, says Hermosillo. <laughs> um, the L's say like a Y. Uh, so it's right here, um, about four hours south of Tucson, Arizona. So it's not like super far down in Mexico, but it is... Um, about a four or five hour car ride, um, although we flew. So that's where Hermosillo is in the heart of Sonora. Um, it's a fairly huge city. Um, it's not even a town, it's a city. It's big, they have a Costco. So um, yeah, it's huge. Um, so we stayed, <laughs> yeah, they have Costco, we went to Costco. Um, it's a huge city. We stayed in a, a very nice uh, apartment there that uh, a missionary family from Canada, they had recently bought a home um, outside of town and kept that apartment for missionary families that come in. And so they were able to rent it to us at a really great rate. Um, but that's where Hermosillo is. And this is the Rowanswees. You probably recognize them from coming in August. They also came a couple years ago when it was their, they come on their furloughs. Um, Gabe, Jeff, and Leela. And uh, the little bottom picture, Choo Choo, is um, she's eight months, and they're in the process of adopting her right now from the children's home. So we need to be praying for that, praying for them, because um, the process is long, and it's been up and down, and um, they're rescuing her from a very bad situation. So, um, so we need to pray that they are able to 
to continue their adoption process. But they just love her, and we just fell in love with her while we were there, too. Uh, so the, we arrived Saturday, Saturday afternoon, had a chance to go back to the apartment, drop all of our stuff off, and then Jeff had arranged for a youth night for us, which is not out of our comfort zone since we teach the youth here. Um, they had about 40 youth come out um, from two different churches. I love what they do there. Their churches are very united. Um, they, they really think of themselves as one body. And so they invited four churches to come from the area. Um, two of the churches couldn't come because one of the little girls, one of the youth was having a quinceanera. <clears throat> so the two churches were getting together for that. But between the two churches in Hermosillo, um, they brought 40 youth to come out and um, play with us. So we got to play games. Nick taught on living a holy life in 1 Peter 3. And uh, we had a lot of fun. The, the youth there were so excited to have us and, and so excited to meet us and get to practice their English um, because they got to, they, they learn it in school. For those that go to school, most of them do. But um, so they were really excited to practice their English with us. Uh, oh, well, it works either way. I'm sorry, my sound guy son here is telling me the wrong, I'm doing the wrong thing. So this is Casa de Gracia, the House of Grace. Um, this is a children's home. And what we learned while we were there is that uh, they call it an orphanage, but it's really not. The children aren't orphans in the sense that their parents have died. The children are orphans in the sense that their parents have signed them over. Their parents were not able to care for them. So most of them are sibling groups. Um, there's 23 currently in the home. And, um, and their parents have signed them over to um, Pedro and Zoila. Uh, who are the directors of the children's home. And they have them until they're 14. <clears throat> at 14, Mexico considers them of age. So then at 14, they're able to make the choice. They want to go back to their parents. They want to go out and live on their own. They want to go do what they want to do. They can do that. If they want to stay, they're welcome to stay. What did you say? <laughs> so this is the plot of land. <laughs> it's my 16-year-old. Um, this is their plot of land that was given to them by a missionary family in Canada. They have a lot of missionaries from Canada there. Um, they, they gave them this plot of land, and then they've built this building on top of it. They've gotten help from other, um, other churches in Canada, as well as um, some help from the government there, who has been able to, um, they've got f um, friends in the government who have been able to help them build this building. This is Pedro and Zoila, and they run the children's home. They came out of children's home, both of them. Um, they were both raised in a children's home. And God put it on their hearts to start a children's home. Um, they are married and have a beautiful little three-year-old daughter who's got the most crazy hair. She's adorable. Um, Pedro just blew me away. Um, he wakes up every morning at 5 a.m., goes for a run, comes back from his run, and then he wakes up the older kids. He gets them breakfast. He does a Bible devotion with them and then gets them ready, has them do cleanup, and then takes them to school, comes back, and does the whole thing over again with all the younger children. The younger children go to school between 12 and 1 o'clock. So he does the same thing over again with the younger kids. They clean up. They do their homework. They have a preschool lesson things like that, um, we were able to be able to help with that. So, um, and then that's Zoila, his wife, and they were um, just gifted with two washing machines. Before that, they were having to, to wash by hand. Uh, so we got, to, we got there Sunday after church, and we got to play soccer with them. Unfortunately, my, my oldest daughter broke her toe while they were playing soccer. And the second day we were there, she did not. This one kicked her. <laughs> it was awful. It was okay. She toughed it up. Um, so this, um, on their wall there, it says, Nuestro hogar creciendo en el amor de Cristo. It means our home growing in the love of Christ. And that's their motto there at the home. Um, there we go. This little girl, Barbie, she's three. I adore her. 
she's so cute and so loving and so sweet. And she just wants to be picked up and held and loved. And they actually have a rule that you can't pick her up too much <laughs> because when the missionaries leave, then she wants to be held everywhere. But she's so adorable. And so we got to, um, we got to play with them. We got to do English work with them and math work with them and, um, and help them out with their preschool. Nick was drawing with some of the kids. They have this cool bowling set that they got to do too. Um, Barbie is one of the three-year-olds that lives there. The other three-year-old besides Pedro and Zoilas is Miguel. Um, and there's a picture of him too. He's adorable as well. But um, they've been there since they were a year and a half. When they came, they had parasites and lice, and they had to be dewormed. It was a whole process of deworming them, a whole process of um, getting all the bugs off of them. Um, and now they're happy, and they're sweet and caring and loving children, and it just breaks my heart that they had to live in those conditions. But praise God for Pedro and Zoila, who were able to open this home for them. While we were there, we got to do devotions and testimonies um, with the kids, Lily. <laughs> Lily made friends with everybody. And this was Lily's best friend, Lupita. Um, they were just stuck together from day one. And Lily, since she wasn't able to be here, um, she wrote what she wanted to say to you guys. She says, I met a lot of friends at Mexico. One of my friends is named Lupita. Her mother and father can't take care of her right now. I think she misses me and her family. We were great friends, but I'm going to see Lupita again. Lupita has a trampoline at the home. At the home, I taught in Psalm 27, the whole chapter of Psalm 27. I taught how I came to know Jesus and how they should love Jesus too. I, it was fun. We played bowling too. We had an awesome time in Mexico but Lexi broke her toe, so please pray for her. Thanks. <laughs> so she had such a great time, and the kids just ate it up that she wanted to do a devotion with them. She read in Psalm 27, she read in Ruth, and she gave them her testimony. And Gabe, um, Jeff and Leela's 17-year-old son, translated for her. Um, so they had a great time. This is inside their home, Eric with Choo Choo and Lupita. And they have a very nice kitchen um, with three refrigerators, which you need when you have 23 kids. They have another um, door in their window. <laughs> and um, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. it's under construction. It's in the process. Um, Monday, we got to go out and do an outreach in a town, well, a little village that was about an hour and a half outside of Hermosillo, um, down a little pothole road. Um, it made us all very sick to get, to get there, but, um, but it was off the beaten path. And um, it's a fam uh, this, this village was not accessible beforehand because the drug cartels had come in and taken over this town since it was so far off the beaten path. Um, but recently, they had the police come out and drive the cartels out, so it is safe again, um, not only for the inhabitants, but also for us to come in. And we were able to do an outreach with the children. Um, so we had like, there was like 30 kids. There was like 30 kids who came. It was funny, we got there, and they all bum-rushed Lily, and then uh, they took her out and they said they were taking her out to go invite other kids in the community. But they actually were just showing her off because she had white skin. <laughs> and she speaks English. Um, but it was cute. And Lily played along because she loves the attention. I wonder where she gets that from. So, um, so we got to teach them and play with them. And we made goodie bags for them that had um, things that our congregation donated. Uh, crayons and pencils and erasers and um, and toothbrushes, hand sanitizer, and a couple pieces of candy um, and glow bracelets because we played a game with them that we play with the youth called Tron. So um, so we played fun games and that was all of them after they've been hopped up on candy <laughs> and they wanted to take pictures with Lily. Um, and Marcus wanted to tell, talk a little bit about this portion of the trip. Uh, 
Hi. Oh, that's a little. This is my first time on stage, so it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> a different a little bit. It's kind of funny because Pastor Gary calls this a family vacation. I just call it awesome parents. I mean, Aww. this is a 10 year anniversary, and they bring their children along. I mean, how great. You're welcome. We have good Two kids. thumbs up. What about All right. Brothers, no? Stop trying to suck up and go. Anyways, um, you know, when we got to Mexico, it was fun. Uh, the first day, we got to eat a lot of food and just rest and, and go to the youth night. And the second day, we got to play with the kids in the children's home. And it was just a great time. But I didn't feel like the Lord was speaking to me personally. And uh, we got, it took the next day and the third and fourth day, we went to children's outreaches in the village, and um, it was, um, it was tough for me because um, they had nothing, nothing. And I see it here, and I complain every day. And it's actually kind of fun to see me complain. I'm like, I'm like, my iPod doesn't play games anymore. It's just too old, man. I can't even text on it anymore. But, um, and they're sitting there and they have nothing. And it was, it they was had joy. Tough. They did. And it was tough. And God said, why do you complain so much? You know, you should be, well, you should thank me every day for what you have. And it was just a blessing to me. And I also got a teacher lesson to all the kids there. And it was great. That was great. Good job. Good job. I love you. So he did. It was a proud mommy moment. He got to get up the following day. We went to another outreach, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, and he got to teach the lesson. On an hour's notice, Jeff said, who wants to teach the lesson today? And he was like, I'll do it. And he did. And it was amazing. Um, so uh, this was the homeless shelter we went to. Um, again, not like a homeless shelter like we would think of. I have to explain the hospital system to you. The way that the hospitals work there, they have doctors, but they don't have nurses. So the family becomes a nurse, and the family takes care of doing whatever the doctor says needs to be done. Uh, a lot of times, um, if the injury is very bad, the family can't afford to stay and play nurse, so they abandoned. They abandon the person in the hospital. Because this is such a common thing, especially with the elderly, they um, built a building next door to the hospital where the hospital could take the abandoned people. And they could receive care and food, and, um, and, and they, get, uh, they get well cared for there. Um, so we were able to go and visit. I didn't take pictures of any of the people there because I didn't feel it was appropriate at the time. Um, we were just being introduced. And, um, but, you know, a lot of them have really sad stories about being abandoned. And uh, Jeff and Leela go, and they um, feed them meals. They uh, do Bible studies with them. Um, they're very well known around there. They do um, physical therapy with some of the patients that need it. <clears throat> and they're very well loved everywhere they go. So this was um, Miguel Aleman which was the second hour to and two for the children. Um, this is the inside of their church. It's just bare bones. That's what they have. That's what they deal with. Um, everywhere you went, there was barbed wire. They had to barbed wire around the church because people kept stealing stuff from inside the church. Um, and this is up on top. That's one of the homes. It's pretty much what all the homes look like as we drove by. It's just dirt roads out there. Not working. I didn't do anything, I promise. Is the battery dead? I don't know. Help me, sound guy. There we go. <laughs> All right, so this is Marcus teaching, and I think my husband gave me the wrong slide video. Um, this little girl here in the green, uh, she broke my heart. Air Marcus was standing next to me, Air Marcus. He was standing next to me, and um, there were flies all over her face. And, and she wasn't swatting them away or anything. She just let them crawl on her face. And Marcus 
he made the comment to me. He said, Mom, how many times does a child have to have flies crawling on her face before she doesn't even recognize them anymore? She doesn't even realize them. And uh, it just broke my heart. But a lot of the kids were well taken care of um, and seemed to be um, well taken care of. So we got to play with them. We get to teach them. Marcus taught them on creation. Um, and Jeff translated for him. There we go. Oh, go back. See? Help me, Eric. You're my only hoop. Go back one more. There we go. Oh, no. Okay. So this is the women's outreach. I got to do a women's outreach, um, which was great, in the same area, the same little village that we did the children's outreach. We did a women's coffee, and I got to talk and give my testimony. Um, I grew up in an area very similar to this area that's very drug ridden and gang ridden and um, and so it was a, an encouragement to me to be able to go and encourage these women about um, being in the Lord loving the Lord and loving their children in the Lord um, and we made bracelets that glue in the dark and um, and so I encourage them to be the light of Christ in the dark uh, next slide so then we got to go to the zoo and Eric wanted to talk to you about the zoo. You take that. All right. I'm good, I promise. Go. Okay. So, hi. I'm the sound guy, 16-year-old that my mom hates. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, I got one son who prizes me and one... Oh, okay, well, go. Well, I don't suck up. Okay, go. <laughs> Can you just talk about the mission trip? Anyways, so... Um, <laughs> so got to go um, to the zoo. Uh, so yeah, we went to the zoo. It was um, not the same as our zoos. Our zoos, they're in cages and all locked up and stuff. And they tell you not to put your hands in. And I mean, at the zoo, you're not supposed to put your hands in either. But um, they, don't, they don't have them in cages. They're open pins, basically. Like, like a safari. Just, yeah, it's really basically that's what it is. It's a safari. Is They have no cages. You can get up close to the animals. I mean, you don't want to touch one, but... We the giraffe. <laughs> well, we, the we took the actual safari, and then I touched Pioncho. Uh, Pioncho. Pioncho. Okay, go. Poncho. Um, what did you learn? Um, it, while I was there, I was... Um, is when the kids sort of... Uh, I started getting attached with the kids. Um, they tried to get me to play with them, and I'm not very good with kids, and so I was all kick the soccer ball, and that's about it. Um, but while we were there, um, Ruben, one of the kids, uh, he came up to me, and he's, we were, they were, there was an evolution thing on the side, and I mean, I understood that it wasn't, it wasn't real and all this other stuff, but he was, he was trying to make some, like a joke, and I was all, okay. He pulled me over, and there's this mirror there, and in the mirror, it shows your face, and then the rest of it is a caveman's body with that's like not the right size of an actual body. So he's like, thinks it's hilarious, and he's laughing, saying that I have like- You caveman. Yeah, basically, I was a caveman. And I was all, oh, okay. So he went to go look at another exhibit, and I came up behind him, and I grabbed him, and I picked him up, and I put him in front of the mirror, and I said the same thing he said, and I was, I was like, so you're the caveman. And he's all, and he's like trying to get fight out of it. And he's like, no. And I'm all, sorry. And um, so that's when I started to hang out with him a little more. Um, and I hung out with the kids the entire time. We went to, the, they had a petting zoo there too. Uh, they really liked the goats and the bunnies and stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's what I got out of it. So we had a great time at the zoo. Um, this is Miguel, the other three-year-old. He's adorable. <laughs> so cute. And Lily with her best friend. And the monkey who decided to perform for us, which was great. Um, and we got to take the kids on safari. They got to feed the giraffes. And they don't get to do stuff like that. They don't get to go out um, because there's 23 of them. It's a hard thing to take 23 kids out on a, anywhere. So uh, because we had more supervision, we were able to do that, um, which was a great blessing for us. 
And we got to eat. We ate a lot. There's lots of good food. Uh, we ate two of their specialties, pancharones, which are burritos, and um, sonora dogs, which are like hot dogs, exemplified Mexican style. Um, and we slept because we were exhausted. We, we did a ton of stuff. See, you gave me the wrong slide. Um, but the thing that we wanted to let you know is next year, um, God has put it on our heart to start mission team there. And um, this was something that we had prayed that God would call us to for a long time. And, and it's finally happening. Yay! So, um, so we're praying to go back next year and then that we get to take a team with us of you all. Yeah, normally it's not advisable to, you know, decide in a month that you're going to go on a trip to Mexico. So uh, <laughs> we're going to give you all a lot more notice. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if this is, has impacted you, if the Lord's ever had missionary work on your heart, um, pray about that. We're going to um, sit down in the fellowship hall here, and if you want some more information uh, about what we have planned, you can come out and talk to us and uh, pick up an application, and um, we're really excited uh, to be able to, to, to do this. So we're going to go next October, so you've got like a whole year to plan, all right? Um, so please join us next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's all.